What's up everybody? Dan here with Dan and Star Makers and we are back for episode three of our hammer nail off shootout, whatever. This is the uh, kind of an overview of popular framing hammers that we're finding out there nowadays. And today we are looking at the DeWalt. This is their MIG weld hammer. They've got a couple different hammer series, the MIG weld, and then they have another one, um, which is a little less expensive, a little bit more meaty. This is kind of a minimalist hammer. Um, so this is pretty popular for a lot of carpenters that I'm seeing nowadays. It is an all steel hammer. It's got a dual uh, texture grip. It's got a rubberized grip with a heavier plastic um, black portion. It's kind of a more rigid plastic, so it's got this softer over mold grip here. This hammer is kind of unique in that it's kind of getting into the S-Wing style where it's a very thin cross section here on the body. And then the head itself is actually kind of just a metal strap with a face on the end. And it's called a MIG weld hammer because they've actually MIG welded around the perimeter of this head to the handle itself. So these are pretty durable from what I've seen. Um, we have carpenters that have to put um, in bed plates, edge protection for housekeeping pads, and they actually will bash the Nelson studs on those edge metals into place or kind of bend them. And they use these hammers, they use them for steel stakes, things like that. So that in itself means that I think they're pretty durable. Again, working around concrete, rebar, steel stakes, form stakes, things like that, it's gonna be pretty durable. Demolition work, it's gonna be pretty durable. The hammer itself is rated, this particular one is 14 ounces for the head weight and now we are starting to get into the lightweight hammers which are becoming really popular um, we're trying to get as much mass out away from the pivot point up towards the end of the head as possible to kind of give you that good fast swing and reduce the actual weight that you're carrying so like i said and like we've seen the head weight is substantially different than the overall weight so this is a 14 ounce hammer and we are looking at a total of 30 ounces. So it's just under two pounds. Um, we're looking at, uh, what is that, around seven to eight ounces less than the other hammers, even though their heads were substantially heavier. They were uh, probably pushing the eight ounce heavier, almost half a pound heavier on the head itself, but it's still kind of a heavy hammer. So that being said, some of the features that I do like are that it's got the magnetic holder. It is in a very minimalist magnetic holder, so only half the nail head is actually being pushed when you drive, and probably only maybe a third of the diameter of the nail actually sits inside the recess. It's very short compared to the other hammers that we've looked at, so I'd be kind of afraid that it might pop out of there a little bit more easily if you don't set it just just perfectly. It might have a, more of a tendency to graze or glance out of there. The head itself is right around five and just a smidge over three quarters of an inch. So if we want to get technical, 13 sixteenths of an inch. And then the overall length on this one here is about 16 and a half inches. So again, we can use it to space our nail spacing and um, it's a little bit longer than our other hammer, so you might get a little bit more whip to it. This is a straight handle. It's got a little bit of a kick out on the end to just kind of hold it in your hand a little better as you're swinging it. Some of the disadvantages here, there's, because it is kind of a thin steel shaft or shank here, um, there's no place to drive a nail on the side. So when you do get in a tight area, if you do need to drive the nail on the side, you're always gonna be half inch shy of actually sinking the nail. You're not going to be able to do it. And you're probably only going to be able to easily do it on one side of the hammer because there's a little bit of a rib pattern with a radius rib here. So you're probably not going to have much luck side nailing. I haven't tried it, but I don't think you would be super successful in that. Also, because of that method here, there's no way to pull a nail off to the side on the cheek of the hammer. But with a, any traditional hammer, you have the claw that you can pull the nail here. Um, and then you can pull it side to side. It does have this kind of corrugated deformed rib 
along the shank of the hammer or neck, which would make me think that it would be kind of durable pulling side to side. So let's uh, take it outside. We'll give it a try and I'll tell you what I think here in a minute. Price point for these, um, again, I've seen them really expensive. I've seen them less expensive, but probably in the $50-ish range would be what you'd want to spend on this hammer. from trying out the DeWalt here, this MIG weld hammer. Um, this was the first hammer in this series here that actually felt good to me for swinging. It's light enough, yet the weight is out where you want it. So I actually really liked this hammer so far in our three that we've done. Um, the handle is pretty comfortable. It's got a really unique, I don't know, the pattern on it. Let's see if it'll kind of focus in on it. The pattern here almost reminds me of something out of like a spaceship sci-fi movie pattern. It's kind of weird, but it, it feels good in the hand. Um, it feels good swinging it. It's pretty robust hammer-wise, just from what I've actually seen people use these hammers for. Price point, we're getting into the more expensive stuff, but it's still affordable. Um, it's lacking a few of the features for pulling nails and driving nails on the side. So that might be one thing to consider. The magnetic nail setter is a little bit shallow. It doesn't hold onto the nails super well, but it seemed to do okay in the one that I tried. Um, pulling nails, you can really wrench on this one a lot more than the other hammers, um, especially the wood ones, just because it is a pretty durable shaft and the way it's attached with the really heavy weld. So I would say for a lightweight, inexpensive hammer, this would probably be the way to go. Like I said, you're missing some features, but that can be offset by not spending, you know, you can buy four of these for the price of some of the other hammers out there. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad, but you can. So it seems to be really popular and uh, I'll definitely try this out on some of my future projects just to see when I actually start swinging a hammer, see what I think of it. So anyways, like I said in all the previous videos, um, if you've got experience with this hammer, give us, give us some comments. Tell us what your pros are, your cons are. If you've got any um, issues that you've come across or if you see areas where these really shine, um, being that they're all steel, demolition, concrete form work, things like that, stripping forms, uh, a lot of laborers seem to carry these and they have to do a lot of just like smacking on concrete, cleaning things up. Uh, stripping concrete forms, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, leave some comments. Remember to thumbs up, like, subscribe, share these videos, talk about it with your friends, all that good stuff because it helps us out. So, um, until next time, stay tuned for the, our next video coming up where we start getting into our titanium hammers. So, this is Dan with Dan and Sarah. We'll see you later. Have a good one. Bye.